or elimination. I guess it wouldn't be disqualification because yeah. you've actually played and then lost. So yeah. the elimination round right now, Coast, on your screen up two to one. Final five scratching their way back into this one. Could even it up here at two and two. That's how math works if you win another one in a best of five. But it could be game point here for Coast. And the seems like the veterancy of being LCS players is really coming at, mm. to the forefront now. They've just been playing so well, synergizing a lot harder. Yeah, and we've actually seen a lot of reverse sweeps so far. That's true. Final five won the Can first two happen. games against Fusion yesterday. Lost the next three. Coast won the first game against Curse Academy. Lost the next three. And here, it could be Coast winning the next three after losing the first game because they have pretty much all the momentum after these last two games. Yeah. They seem to have dismantled the champion pools of Final Five a little bit, and they're punishing them very hard for it. Figuring out how to get it short ace in the jungle has definitely been to good effect. They weren't really too afraid of his Nunu. They let him have that again, and they were really able to take it to gate in the mid lane as well. Prototype, they have been catching out. Like I said, Coast is finding the tendencies that we haven't seen Final Five finding of Coast yet. They were able to take down Rux over and over in top lane, knowing he'd EQ on Jarvan. Those little things are becoming yeah. apparent to Coast, and it's making these games that much more seamless for them. And the target bans will continue. There's no reason to go away yeah. from something that has worked so well for them. Bane is here. The Zed is a little perplexing there, but I think it's because they want to first pick something nice. Let's see if they end up banning Lee Sin away to keep it from Impaler this time. Very interesting bans. Chase hasn't really been something that's been used throughout this series either. Saw it banned a few times. But it's more been focused on the AP compositions. We've seen a lot of Lissandra, maybe that being a banned out. Thresh playmaking wow. for Sheep. Actually, they yeah. think that could be a first ban coming out. Rule 18 knows he gets his Janna, so feeling comfortable on that. Maybe they'll take his Janna. Who knows? He did play an all right Nami. Chris. Very true. Now ready to pull this one out. Put your sheep into a bit of a strange place, actually. Yeah. I Could mean, play the Blitz he's crank, played Janna before. He played his Blitz. <clears throat> yeah, but he's pretty much Janna Thresh, Janna Thresh, Janna Thresh mm -hmm. all down the line. Yeah. But I don't think it's something they really want to <clears throat> first pick, you know? That's, Especially because yeah. it gives two picks back the other way with stuff like Lissandra on the board, which seems like one of the few mutually desirable champions between these two teams. Lee Sin's there, man. Impaler played one hell of a Lee Sin game. He played one hell of a Pantheon game, too. A lot of contestable picks up right now. That's, I think, why Coach is having so much discussion. They obviously want one of them, but they're trying to figure out what they're actually giving yeah. up for it. They're laughing a bit, too. Yeah. There we go. That's a logical choice, I feel like. Shorter Ace, even when he was relying on his Lee Sin, 2-10, Three and three, two right. and ten. You said he got it six, six games in a row. Mm -hmm. But even with it those, it he wasn't, wasn't like super successful. carry games. Yeah. Right, absolutely. That is going to be his Jarvan, though. Rux gets his Lissandra, so that's going to be huge for the top lane. He feels good. He can perform. Rux has been known as kind of one of the guys on the team people look up to and whatnot. And I heard the manager even say very pleased with the way he's controlled and helped the team being one of the older ones. Really somebody that they can look up to. So getting his best champion is going to help. They do ah. take away the Janna from Rule 18. Probably see him picking up Nami. And Gate has not shown us this assassin side of him yet. This Yasuo is in his wheelhouse. See if they can get that going. I'm saying wheelhouse a lot today. Stop. Sure. <laughs> I'm a, everybody overuses words sometimes. Too many words in their wheelhouse. But the thing with this <laughs> is... Uh, yeah, I think Nami's probably going to be the Rule 18 champion that he ends up going back to, unless they're really trying to throw a yeah. bit of a curveball here. They did play against a pretty effective Soraka in Game 2. Picked up a few tricks, maybe. Bring the crowd control. Come on. Yeah, well, they have a lot, is the thing. And Jarvan with Soraka works quite well. That's true. The because that's... you can keep them in the jail even after it's gone if you put the silence slash rooting zone down in the yeah. right place. I got to take it. Yeah, pretty good team comps. Like, that's the thing. Uh, Coast and Final Five, aside from Game 1, when Coast was severely out-team compositioned, I feel like, have had functional comps in both games. It's really come down to the play. A lot of that has been in the hands of Impaler to get things going for the team. Jezus has been playing safe. Mash me, cleaning up fights with Corky picks if he can get it, which he did again. That's been huge for a lot of the AD carries coming in this week. We actually saw High at IEM playing Corky in the mid lane, wreaking some havoc with it there. So on the board, all around one of the better AD carries right now. 
Oriana to get locked in by Jezus. He's going to be flip-flopping around now to a new champion there. Not the Ari this yeah. time. It doesn't even get banned out. He just feels like control with that Maokai, the ball control with the Lee Sin, plays can be made. Yeah. Relatively underground champion that we've seen here. So, you know, not many people have been playing Ori yeah. for this tournament, but it's an old classic here for Coast. And I like it. While it's actually been Final Five who's running the Protect the Carry compositions, this is the classic shielding technique yeah. here. Oriana plus Janet to keep pretty much whoever they want alive. Good combo initiation with the Maokai. And maybe a little bit heavy on the magic damage, but because they have the Lee Sin in there, they have a very well-rounded team, which I think is what Coast needs here. Since Final Five is the one trying to catch people off guard, they're the ones panicking. Just play something normal. Let Final Five come to you and try and beat them that way. And it looks like Final Five actually or goes the poke game this time, really having any siege. You get a little bit of aggression there. If Gate takes LeBlanc, haven't really seen him try to go too hard or aggressive on his champion. So we'll see if he gets himself into trouble or actually puts up some numbers here with this LeBlanc. We've seen a lot, a lot of players in the mid lane taking LB. As you've discussed before, the, the stats, six to nine, lower HP, higher spikes for the assassins to come out and take those squishies down that have the lower HP and LeBlanc has been one of them. Zed off the board. So Gate goes for that assassin potential in her. It's going to be interesting. We do have to mention Prototype as well if we're talking about Final Five. Because as the series progresses, I feel like he's just going down his tier list of favorite 80 carries every single game. He's like, Vayne? All right, yeah, that worked. Okay, yeah. Vayne's banned. Let's do Jinx. All right, they kill me. Caitlyn, oh, I'm not doing enough damage. Lucian, well, I haven't played it much. <laughs> and even though he is kind of the catch-all for 80 carries, right. I'm interested to seeing him on Lucian just, just because he is the type that was kind of foregoing and rejecting that AD carry meta for so long. He's like, I'm just going to play Bane and Jinx, and that's going to get me into the LCS. Right. When it's kind of become clear that that will actually get them, among other things, eliminated from this tournament and auto-seeded into Challenger, he's at the last second abandoning his champion pool and just going for Lucian. Well, it's one of the things that gets weird, right, is how many times have you been in this situation? How many times has your champion pool been tested this yeah. much? It's the first time, probably. And then you're figuring, you're like, wow. I don't deal with this on a daily basis. Like, mm -hmm. this is me feeling uncomfortable as we go into this game. Maybe if you get that first kill, it comes up big. Make sure you write us who you think is going to win, what's going to happen, how it's going to happen. Hit us up on Twitter, at LOL Esports, LCS Expansion. Use that hashtag, and we'll be checking in on some of your thoughts later. We'll really let you know, but we're still going to check them because I like them. Yeah, I might let Jeff them know. Them. If they tweet at me, I'll be like, if it's a nice tweet, I'll favorite it. Oh, I like responding to some of the really nice ones too. Yeah, or the the inquisitive questions that make me really question. Inquisitive if I'm questions the right that things. make you question things. Welcome I mean, that is what an inquisitive question does. Is it it does. It makes you question. Well, we're gonna question if Final Five will be able to stay in this best of five, a double elimination tournament here for the NALCS expansion, the best of five. What these teams have to endure, and for the first few days, we saw these guys taking each other to 50 minutes. It was some brutal fights. We also heard Shorter Ace, or a few players saying, I really hope that doesn't happen again. That was too long. I've not played that many games before. And it gets tiring. You don't make the moves you want to make. Sometimes you tunnel a little bit harder than usual. Yeah, and the game-to-game -game adjustments are difficult to make. You know, think of the quickness that we are going back into all of these games. That's we'll, true. We'll finish it. It's you like, and I will talk for boom. a little bit. We'll go to five-minute break, and then we're back in a champ select. These guys have ten minutes in between games to... Retro, what yeah. has gone wrong in the past game, and then plan a new strategy. Sometimes you want to just play. Like you remember Uzi stayed on stage after his team <laughs> lost. He's like, I don't want to leave. I just want to play. Entered a game, started playing. Next game, crushed faces. Yeah, that, that's one of those things that only works for Uzi. <laughs> You'd be like, all right, guys, let's not talk about our problems. Let's go. <laughs> and just win the next game somehow. Just make it happen. See if anybody can be that much of a carry. Put the backpack on and make it happen. We're going to have the Gromp start over here for Rule 18 and Prototype. Krugs on the other side, respectively, for Shorter Ace and Rux. Lane swap fun. Particularly teams that have Maokai have an inherent edge in the lane swap because he is one of the few people who can clear a jungle camp that on their own without using smite. Yeah. He stacked it with saplings and was able to get a very early level two here. That will help them a little bit. 
It's kind of like getting use of an old trick when you used to jungle Maokai. It's like, oh, we get to use it again. Very good, very good. <laughs> Still hanging out with Impaler as they go down to the Crux. I believe he smited that one. It's already down. They're just helping each other get around. And it looks like he will stay in the jungle for now. It doesn't have that Trailblazer just yet. Nobody has to really go to lane. We actually saw Fusion, I think, being the only other team that did a lot of lane swapping whenever Mac Noon would be on Rumble so he can stop dragging. But other than that, teams are still trying to, like, figure out 420 what's going down. So the lane swap could really be throwing off Final Five here, especially coming from Blue. I honestly feel sorry for competitive junglers a little bit because <laughs> this jungle gets released where it's no longer what it was in the 2014 season, which most of the time is, all right, you start on a red or blue buff, you kill one other camp, you do the other buff, and then you look to pressure or do things. Mm -hmm. Now, with the unique smite buffs on pretty much everything else, you have to pick a specific path. Depending on your jungler, you have a different back timing, you have different ward timings, yeah. you have tons of different paths. And if that's not enough, you're like, oh yeah, by the way, lane swap. <laughs> you gotta figure out how to do that too see how these guys end up adjusting. They seem to be doing just fine. Not too bad. Both are pretty healthy at where they are right now. Haven't had to back. Gonna go ahead and get their two buffs in. The Valkyrie Sheep trying to play this one a little hard. They do get the Ignite onto Rux, but that's only a little bit of lane pressure. Freezing this one out, Mashmi is gonna be denying some CS, and they're actually getting the wave at them. So that works out really nice to deny Rux here. Chris getting a little bit of CS. 14 to three, so that is actually affecting Rux quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, speaking of lane swaps, Chris is crushing right now. Mm. The CS across the board, I mean, not only is he still in lane against two people, completely fine, not necessarily at immediate risk to dives, but he's 14 CS to three. And it's not like that was at the cost of anything. No. Everyone else on the rest of Coast is doing just fine. A lot of that has to do with the fact that you have an inherent advantage when you're Maokai in a lane swap because you get level two off of a single cam. Yeah. Then you help double jungle and you go to lane at level three. Whereas Rux, I believe, went to lane at level two. He's been having trouble. Already had to blow his flash in that situation, so it's not gonna be any easier. He, look at where Mash has the lane right now. It still hasn't even passed the river since this they engaged. This is what they have to survive. The exactly. big wave, it's a four-man dive. Sheep is not there in necessarily in time, but he's very close. I think they can save it. Nicely done, Impaler getting the vision on. He is no stranger to taking the Q all the way in. No follow on the claw for Rux, and they are forced to kind of just mill about down here. I don't even know if this can turn into a dragon, but they're definitely giving a lot of free farm to Mash in that top lane. He's not ahead of Prototype, so they're not getting huge things, but Rux is going to be strangled for anything as we get to this level six, as we get to the mid game. Coast is coming out on top in this lane swap. There's yeah, one very critical thing about lane swaps that Coast just did is when the big wave arrived, they avoided the dive. And that is what make right. or breaks a 1v2 lane. Because inevitably, the AD carrying support, if they know what they're doing, which Prototype and Relay Team did here, will stack up a very large minion wave. Yeah. And then if you can somehow either kill or push that person off the turret, you take them out of the game. Coast avoided it. They actually put a lot of damage back onto it. The opposite strategy was being employed on the other side of the map, mm -hmm. where MASH was freezing out the top laner, Rux, who was on Lissandra. Therefore, he came bottom lane and tried to help with the dive while missing out on everything. Yep. So he's still level three, walked all the way back top lane where the lane is still barely frozen, not even coming back the other way, and needs a lot of help. Well, he's two levels higher than Rux right now. And you can actually see, as you were saying, how Coast stopped all that from happening. It was perfectly fine to have three of their own members down in the bottom lane. Stopping Final Five from really working anything off of that. Rux now having that much harder of a time to get back into this game. 30 to 6 in CS and Short Race even wasted quite a bit of his time here. Wards behind to make sure they're not getting countered. They're investing a lot of time in this. Yeah, a pink ward, a trinket ward, and 30 seconds. And Mash just plays it like a champ right there. Staying yeah. on the brush side so that even if Jarvan jumped in, he had, would have to at least burn Flash, knowing he had his own summoners up, and just playing conservatively enough. It's so tempting when you're ahead like that in lane to just try and kill him right away, but again, kind of predicting where Short Ace would be going. It's the smart thing for Short Ace to support him up there, because he needs it, and instead he just 
continues farming. Oh, Rule 18 getting caught out. This will be first blood. That goes over to Jezus. And right now, it seems like this lane swap has caused so much chaos for Final Five. Kind of roaming around solo in the river right there. We see Rule 18 going down. He was putting down the wards. He's got to do what he can to get the vision out. But knowing where everybody of Coast was on the map, definitely made it a dangerous position. See, Rux can't help out Shorter Ace here too much. They're trying to take these fights, but Coast is just positioning a little bit better every time to get the upper hand there. Gate looks like he wanted to help, but that just relieved a bit of pressure in the mid lane for Jezus to push. Now he's going to back. It really feels like Coast has just steadily improved yeah. throughout Quickly. this entire series. And Final Five has not been able to answer them. The third game adaptation here to forcing the lane swap really caught Final Five off guard. I think they're in a little bit of a comfort zone. They're just like, all right, we'll pick Lucian, we'll do the lane. And then Mash doesn't even get hit by the Ooh, flag and drag. That Foss Bomb did like 600 damage across, 300 to each of something like that with the auto attacks coming in. Did doesn't a lot. do that much damage yet, but it does a lot. It looked like math. 8.15 on the clock, Impaler still headstrong and just diving to his wards deeper and deeper into the jungle. He's not afraid of anything right now. Gate, no mana to really help what's happening in the top lane, but Coast, they are moving power in numbers so much faster. 10 seconds to 15 seconds ahead of Final Five collapsing on any of these things. And surprise, they're getting their own red buff right now without pressure. They actually are warded out enough to know that Final Five is doing that red. So it's like Coast is going to give that to them for now. Get ready for Dragon. They're getting some nice wards on this as they sweep out. And the potential for pressure is very high with this Coast team composition. They can get the double side stone going very early on. That's true. Because of Lee Sin Jungle and then never let Final five catch their breath. It's going to be very tough. Keeping that vision control up is going to be how Final Five actually gets their picks with the LeBlanc, with their Jarvan. It's going to be hard to just walk into these fights and get what they want out of it with all the disengage. You already see it here, Sheep and Bash still putting a little bit of that power into the bottom lane. It's going to be 75 to 69. So Prototype has done well for himself in a chaotic lane here in the bottom that was back and forth, lane swapped around. But it has not helped still. Rux, 55 to 24 in that top. Good pressure by Prototype. He's putting on the last bit of that mono damage. He doesn't have much more to offer there. Yeah, now the lanes are kind of back to standard. I don't necessarily think we're going to see a huge advantage from Coast. It's a one-level advantage for Mash, which is pretty nice. Yeah. But it's more going to be about Chris punishing Rux, since he was so heavily denied. And hopefully Coast forcing the right kind of dragon fights. The, the solo lanes in particular have just really benefited from this lane swap. Oh, they had one more trick up their sleeve. Not that the lane swap is a trick, but just something. Whoa, prototype and the team weren't expecting, especially that damage coming out from MASH. Every bit yeah. of the Gatling just applying. Prototype stayed within range. Thought he might have the damage output, but sustain from Rule 18 was not enough. They're both going to be forced out of this one. Some different engages that they're deciding to take here. Not they're be not to benefit them. Ooh, shorter ace. Great tornado, but he still gets knocked up. Yeah, that's enough mana just for Cataclysm. You can see Rule 18 trying to crawl around the outside here. Mash may also go down in this. That's the exhaust play that Prototype was able to get away with there. He did not take the initial burst from Corky, but he's also out of mana. This is getting to be a little chaotic Ooh, here. The twist in advance. Go. Prototype very low. So is Rule 18. He flashes to get out of it. Sheep could take one more hit. He stays alive. Mash is trying to get out alive. He misses the no. Q. Rux doesn't hit it. The shield comes in. Jess is here now. He is going to be able to dance around people and waltz on him. The blue buff with Orianna commanding the ball every which way he needs to. And in what an elongated fight, Coast comes up with two kills of their own on Rux in short race. Analysis paralysis right there for Rux. <laughs> he did not know who to kill. They were both easy kills, but he hesitated. He walked in between them. He waited for Sheep to get in the turret. He couldn't burst him down in time because so the good. cooldowns came up. I can't believe nobody on Coast died. They were so screwed for where they were right there, but they ended up all living to get some kills back, and that is really bad for Final Five's morale. Let's see this one more time. It's just sound chaotic. Look at how look, low yeah, look at HPs. HP and mana. Even Sheep. He's right next to him. Blow him up. Just, just blow him up. <laughs> Instead, he I waits. Can't he doesn't even wait for the shield to wear off either, right? Instead, oh. and then he misses his skill shots, even though Mash juked towards it. Once he didn't get the Janet kill, I feel like he was just panicking. At that point, Chris comes in the backside, finishes him off, and the chase is on for Coast. They have the shield power. Impaler actually messes up the kick at the end, but they still win the fight. Really easy. That's the worst. You uh, commit so much to a kill, and then it gets away with a sliver of health. Both of them and then did. the next time you want the kill so much more, and you do it, like you tunnel into the kill again. It could be a very, 
very nasty thing to fall into. Prototype could actually get caught out here. A little bit of deja vu for him. He gets Monsoon against the wall. This should have enough damage. The big one hits in the last. Mashmi picks up another kill. Actually, a kill on his assist, I should say. That's his first one of the game at four and zero. Coast doing it quite methodically this game and making sure yeah. they're picking up a little bit every so often. Just to go back to that Lissandra yeah. play once no, again, absolutely. I don't, I don't want to be overly critical because I realized upon watching that again that the burst through the Janus shield clearly will not kill Sheep, right? Right. He, that's what right. he did in the turret. However, he waited so long. If he waited another half second, the shield would have been gone. Mm -hmm. And what he was trying to do he, is he was trying to secure both kills because he knew he was one spell away from killing Corky and a burst away from killing Sheep. Split second. He just was a little too early, and then he missed his skill shot. So because of those two minor mistakes, he ends yep. up missing up on both kills. You only have that split second to make a decision. Everybody else is doing what they can to survive in the fight as well. So whichever way you choose, it's like diving for a penalty kick. The other way is only going to be harder if you're trying to go back. There's the dragon getting Great a little analogy. bit of damage on him. And he's going to go down quite fast. Down to 1,500. And Paler gets this one for himself. Picks up the first dragon for the team here in the game. And they're only 3k up at this point. They're able to get to the other side. I was going to say the 3k down, but they're blue. Coast is up. They have a turret. It should be answered here now by Final Five. They're grouping. They're starting to use a bit of that team pressure, but I don't know how fast they're going yeah, they're to push this. They enough. don't have prototype with them. He's always off on the side farming at this point. And here comes Chris. Twisted advance in. Rule 18. Separated from the fight just a little bit. Just because we're with the team, it's still dangerous to be the last one in line. And it's really dangerous. I don't mean to be overly harsh, but it's yeah, really yeah, dangerous yeah. to have Rule 18 on Soraka, a champion with such low mobility and inability to protect oneself. When he plays Janet, he plays a very aggressive style, which honestly right. works a lot of the time for him because he puts himself in very dangerous situations, relies on Janet's insane move speed and yeah. insane peeling potential to stay alive. Soraka has none of that, and he's played Janus so many games in a row that he's still putting himself in those dangerous positions. And Soraka yeah. strictly does not have the tools to keep him alive. So he's just going to die a whole bunch this game. It's like he can break the champion he's playing, but he can't break the mentality of the champion. See if he can get himself into some safer spots. Does have Moby Boots, so as long as he can get in and out unscathed, he'll have a little bit safer of a time making that happen. Could do it with Gate. A little bit of LeBlanc pressure could make these easy wards that they're putting out. And they're still getting some, not deep wards, but they're still getting wards. Just on the other side of the river is only going to give them so much vision, though. Coast has really been living on their side of the map, on the bottom side of the river, towards that dragon, towards Prototype. Right now, they're trying to ward the top side. Seems like Final Five is guessing right for now. The Baron is going to be coming up within the next three, four minutes. So, got to make sure that nobody has enough strength just to take that out right once it does come up. It's going to be probably two dragons in favor of Coast by then, so they won't kill Baron right away. But with their long range, with their tanks, they should be able to drop it. Final Five may not be ready. It's been something they could not fight against last game. It's something that Coast really needed to get through the turrets and it's something they know they need to do. So once they find Baron, the game could pretty much be over. Final Five says, we're taking mid. We're starting off our push of the game, though. And we're not going to let you get that far just yet. It is very critical that they can maintain some lane presence in this game. Yeah. Without those turrets, then they would just continue to lose control. And they don't have the champions to play safe wards. That's the biggest problem. Their main warder is on Soraka, who, when you're ahead, is great because you can move around as a team, but they yeah. actually don't want to pick fights right now. And they're at danger of getting initiated on by a righteous glory Maokai, who is really good oh. at initiating fights. That makes it so tough that they don't want to fight because, man, Coast wants to fight a lot right now. Yeah. Like you said, righteous glory on Mao, able to give movement speed to the team, able to pretty much throw out Randuins as well at the end of that engage. No, Final Five. They're going to have a hard time pulling this one out. If they do, as I was saying, I was saying Baron like it's going to happen now, but I'm just looking at their <laughs> wave clear. What's going to happen? For sure. They can't clear once they get to the turrets. They got to do no. something now. They have to make this power spike happen. They're at level 9. Level 11 is coming soon. You're going to get your second all. It's got to be soon. Yet, Final Five has made so many mistakes in the past few games. They're, yeah. they're almost appearing a little gun shy at this time. It's going to be unfortunate for them if they lose this one, but they've already made so many missteps in this game alone, it may be too much to come back from. They've had their backs against the wall in games, and they definitely have right. a lot of playmaking potential. Now the coast is in the mid lane. They're going to try. That could be a big hit. Short race gets blown out of that one. Jess is by himself in the fight. Rux does use that on Jess, but he's out quick. 
Looking on the other side, it is Chris. He's huge. He's trying to make an impact on the back line. Vengeful Maelstrom goes down, so he's not able to mitigate as much of that damage coming in from that ultimate that was circling him. And Impaler is just hatching this ward right now. They know he's there. They're going to try to bait him out for a playmake, but they're not going to give it to him just yet. Yeah. If I was his teammate in solo queue, I would have thought he was AFK there because he was waiting so <laughs> long in the exact same spot. It's like, did we lose Lee? Should we back up? Overall, though, that was a great fight for Final Five to get a one for one. Yeah. Huh. And it's because they positioned properly. They used their assassin mages as flankers. And that's what Impaler was waiting for that whole time. He just Damn. had to find a brush that wasn't warded. So he ends up turning the fight in Coast's favor. And yet again, he is the difference maker in these games. 2-0-2 two, two on the same. So that's where it helped the Final Five was getting their wards on the side of Coast, but they still need wards on their own side of the jungle. Only took a matter of seconds for Coast to push across that side of the river and make things troublesome for Gate. Good kill by Impaler, and it's been consistent. Another game in a row where he's hitting shots. Oh. He's snowballing the team. So close to kills. Jeez, flag and drag just shy and then have Mash jump right over your head. <laughs> you gotta feel bad. Especially when Shorter Ace is trying so hard to make a play. That was an opportunity to yeah. make one, but another kill just slips through their fingertips. Not gonna be any easier, Jack. The core item's getting completed here on the side of Coast. I think they figured out really how to control the game against Final Five. Mm -hmm. And they're able to walk pretty much around them. Not let these engages happen. Not find the claw coming over the wall, but seeing it before it happens. And already, you can see Chris, he does have the flash here. He probably could have walked out of that one, though. Not too much closing coming on. There's the Righteous Glory going off. And go right onto Gate. Remember, he just got back from dying, Whoa. so he does not have his passive. Actually, Go. passive comes up. I lied. Yeah, Leeson just about got him with that kick, and you're seeing the damage and the lead they have right now. Maokai does not forgive when he's chasing people. Soraka trying to get him for the heals. Oh, huge hit onto Shorter Ace. He's not going to be able to peel for anyone else in this fight, and relentlessly, Coast tries to batter down here towards the second turret on the top side. They're not able to get too much without this minion wave right now. They actually don't have many minion waves in any lane but I'm sure they're not too worried about that. Dragon's up, they have control of wards in the top side of this jungle, and they'll be able to walk down and completely see Final Five coming if they want. And I have to emphasize how far ahead Coast is in this game. This is one of the largest gold yeah. leads I've seen in 20 minutes since the 420 patch hit. Previously, since Dragon would give close to 1,000 gold, right. at this point in the game, for a team up this, this much, they would have it, yeah, at yeah, least yeah. taken two Dragons. So they would be up, instead of 6,000 gold, almost 8,000 gold right. in 20 minutes, which is basically an insurmountable lead. The fact that they've got one dragon yeah. with this normal lead is equally as big of a lead. It just takes a little longer to kick in. So they are, That's in, why, yeah. they are in complete control right now. That's why it's sometimes deceiving. It's like, no, the money is not coming from dragon, but they've just outright have the money this time. They're that much stronger. And now dragon is... Really something they're just using as a facilitator to reel in Final oh, Five here. Too. They're going to stop that one. He knows he's get the execution <laughs> kicks damage. Him. Kicks out Short Race, but Short Race comes back in. One smite goes down. The Dragon is actually going to go over to Mash as he was the last one to auto-attack it as the smites were used a bit early. Actually, Short Race died without smiting as he went down really quick. A nice mimic, actually, distortion to get out of that one alive. The chain hits, but he cannot follow up. Chris is actually within range. Twisted advance into Arcane Smash. Sonic Wave hits the last kill. Another one coming in from Mash now. He grabs Dragon and a kill to boot on that one. And now this is just a chase single on Q. Final Five. Yeah, I was saying earlier, he makes it look easy. Yeah, he is Crazy. playing awesome. Even if he smited a little early, he killed the other <laughs> jungler, so it didn't matter. That's the surefire way not to get smite stolen. Just kill the guy. It, easier said than done. It's The kick was good. When you're up this much gold and have such a great team fight composition, which is what Coast has put together with the Oriana and the Maokai, it works quite well. So Coast, assuming they can close this one out, which they are in position to do so, yeah. Yeah. is pretty well poised for tomorrow, actually. They're probably going to feel pretty good. Just to recap this tournament a little bit, we'll do, we'll do it after this fight. Uh, this one was Chris just going in just right. Impaler and Mash just killed Jarvin. Oh, that was a big one. Yeah. It was really close. It would have been a smite steal if they didn't kill him because it sat at 50 health for mm -hmm. at least half a second. <laughs> but there's no the one there to take of, it. The travel time of a missile. Yeah, then actually because they had the Krug buff, Chris gets the move speed boost and can actually chase him down. But to get back to Coast's chances... Yeah, just the, the tournament. Right, first. Good. 
what a shot! Oh, gets him out of the flag and drag, but he says, here, sit in my Cataclysm, I will flash out. They're gonna mitigate this one. It's a very back and forth so far. Nobody wants the full committal on this fight. You can already see the distortion out by gate. He doesn't really get a maximum amount of damage there. He's just in and out to try, to try and create something else for Coast to look at. But they look at him and take him down instantly. It's gonna be a few more closing kills on this one. Coast just using their advantage here to pressure down that much more. And as we were saying, they're gonna carry this momentum into their game tomorrow. How can they yeah. not? They, Total. Like, they've learned so much, it seems, just from these few games as a team together. Total destruction. Every single game got more and more right. into Coast's favor. And a recap of the tournament, Curse Academy already qualified. That's who Coast lost to yesterday. They had a 3-1 against Curse Academy. Yeah. So did Fusion. And they look very, very close in skill. But from a mentality perspective, Coast is the team coming off a win. Fusion is the team coming off a loss, and I think that actually gives Coast a little bit of an edge. True. Neither of these teams have faced each other, and Coast has the confidence of being like, oh yeah, the only team we lost to was the team that just won straight out. Plus, right. we destroyed Fusion, who, by the way, Final Five, sorry, Coast is thinking we destroyed Final Five. Right, F yeah. Whereas Final Five took Fusion to five games. Yeah, they so did. They took the first two. Obviously, every single matchup between teams is yep. intrinsically different because the matchups work in a different way from player to player. But from a mental perspective, especially with how well Impaler is playing, Coast has got to feel good going into tomorrow. Could be a very interesting matchup. Let's see what the champion pools are shared between those two teams. Obviously, top laner is uh -oh. sharing quite a bit recently. Uh -oh. And this Lissandra, you can see it's safety. But then if you have too many people around it, nothing is safe. He's going to go down quite quick. Rux cannot do much. And 1-4 here on one of those top tier champions that he likes to pick. Not being an impact on this game. It does not spell good things. Impaler actually gets caught going and the shopping, actually shopping, window shopping. That's there it actually is. what it looked like there. Boom. He had very slow reactions once LeBlanc interrupted his recall. Chris in a little bit of trouble as well. Asked to burn Flash. So getting ahead of themselves as we were a just doing. Bit. Getting ahead of them for Co, saying the game was over and yeah. moving on to the next thing. Something you can't necessarily do in this series, but it is still just one kill. Nice bit of shutdown goal to gate. May open up some vulnerabilities for the assassination, but yep. they already have a lock of the Iron Solari. They have a lot of shields. Co should still be all right. Yeah, they're doing quite well. We actually see teams pick it up two lockets. They benefit each other, but not many people are going to keep benefiting off of that if you try to build a million of them. We see Curse doing it quite a bit. Coast did it just the other game, and now it's only one. Like you said, Sheep has that built up, stopping the assassination potential, hopefully, of Gate to come in here. Now they start to set up towards Baron. Good wards coming in from Coast. They have pretty much all the vision that they need to see anybody coming from any distance. And they'd probably peel off a of Baron and take the fight before that even happened to make sure it wasn't a dangerous thing to do. Right now, they have the yeah. control. They also have Nash on the way up and full vision right now, final five. This is how this one may end. Yeah, I don't necessarily like the timing of this Coast Baron. It's a little bit of a tell, but Mash, I feel like he should be helping with damage. He's instead hoping to assassinate this. This could be the best play. They're most likely going to get it. LeBlanc could oh kill Impaler. Dear. Oh dear, All right. that was close. Impaler gets the buff, though. They are going to have super buff minions as they make their way to the outside lanes. Takes another distortion over the wall. There's the wish coming in from Soraka, but how much is this actually going to help them? Right on the edge of the command shockwave, Prototype actually gets thrown back to safety after taking quite a bit of damage. On to Mashmi, he dodges just out of the flag and drag. Things are happening in favor of Coast just so much and so often. Everything falling in their favor right now. Things like the knockup not hitting, things like just making it out with a sliver of health. And oh, Final no! Five cannot catch a break. That's going to be the ace, the double kill, but he actually goes down in the end as he valiantly attempts to dive. Coast looking to clean this one up quick. Well, they catch the smallest of breaks right at the end because the last tick of the turret yeah. shot finished off Impaler, but everything else went Coast's way in that last fight. They patiently took down the Baron. Smite Steel was not in range. They chased for kills in a very organized manner. Coast is looking better and better as this series runs to a close because yep. the comeback is nearly impossible at this point. Yeah, they're surmounting way too much of a lead here. 21 to four. 
not as big as what the Fusion versus Final Five game was. Like we said, that was some 55 minutes at 41 kills to 20. But Coast just too much control here. They're not waiting after they get these two, three, four kills. They're taking more dragons. Number three going. Two more for the Aspect, but I don't know if we're even going to reach that point. Coast looks like they are putting down the Stranglehold now. It's going to be the bottom tier turret. All they need to go for, that top wave is just going to push for them as the top turret hasn't even been taken down. So they can go back to that whenever they want. And still a very fresh Baron buff Yeah, on these guys. The One of the normal counters to the Baron buff that makes it not super, super OP is the mm -hmm. fact that you can force a fight on the enemy team since they don't have the region anymore and you can harass them down. But I feel like Coach is so strong yeah. right now. They're just going to win on this next push. Funny you say that. It's actually... Seems like Coast last game didn't there take that try. into consideration and they fought a little too hard. That's one kill going over to Rocks in the favor of Coast here as they start this one off. It could be a final one. A lot of damage onto Chris as the turret locks down onto him. Two more kills going out as Gate and Prototype hit the floor hard inside the base and Coast is turning it into shambles right now. Looking like they want to move on to Fusion tomorrow. They're keeping themselves in. Final five could be eliminated here with this final push and Coast looks for the Nexus turrets. That's going to be the surrender from final five. Coast will move on to face Fusion tomorrow. Hey, that's a sigh of relief for these guys right now. They were not able to make it into the winner's bracket final, but now they are moving into the final qualification game for the LCS, yeah. which will be played tomorrow against Fusion. They definitely picked it up game after game just to get better yep. and better and better as the series progressed. And they made it not a contest by the end of it. They just started destroying Final Five. And Final Five absolutely putting up a fight as well, being as you know refreshed as they are. Yeah. or new as they are, switching the team so much, trying to get a team in. And like we said, they're still qualifying for Challenger Series next time yeah. as they fall they're out in. of this. Uh, yeah, they're in. But they weren't even ready for this one. They said, oh, now we're in. We'll take the chance. We'll do it. And they did seem to come together as a team more. But on paper, you look at it, you can't expect them to beat top well, at one point, LCS yeah. members all across the board who are ready for the long game, who are ready for this endurance and have played this style before. You look at the Final Five team on paper, and this is why everyone was always surprised by them overperforming, is the players aren't the top of challenger like we see in right. a lot of other teams. They aren't known. They don't yeah. actually play all the meta champions. So you're thinking, how was this team going to be successful? And honestly, they set their own bar pretty low. They just wanted yeah. to make it into challenger series next year, which they have already done. So they actually did accomplish their first goal. They just didn't make it into their stretch goals. So right. no LCS this year. Yeah. They still have a future, though, because any team they can find that much success without having the top, top, top of Challenger and without being around for a really long right. time clearly has some type of intrinsic teamwork that works well together. And if they can continue to build on that, they could very well make it into the LCS next year. And that's quarter. really hard to find as well. I, I said it for Coast that, you know, you get a lot of LCS players that kind of want to, I want to do my style if a game gets tight or they think they can carry. But you might get that out of new players as well that think they can do it, that want to be the hot head of the team. But these guys all seem very down to earth, know what they're doing in the game. It was awesome talking to Shorter Ace. It was awesome talking to the rest of the team, hearing what they wanted to do. They did actually try. Who else is going to try to pull out a Lulu yeah. jungle in a best of five? Maybe Kickus. Yeah. Who knows? But still, like these are the kind of things that need to happen that throw off the veteran teams when they don't know what's going on. Yeah, we even talked, uh, I saw an interview with Dash, Final Five manager yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, she was very well-spoken. Yes, yeah, she was. Right? Like, they actually have some good heads on their shoulders. They have some good guidance as well. I'll be interested to see if they stay together, right? Because right. so many times I, I go on this field and be like, this team's got a great future if they just do this and this and this. But then since a lot of these are really young guys, they're just like, he sucks. Let's finish it. Let's take a new <laughs> player in this one. And it, it all ends up falling apart. I hope they stick together because I think they have a future. Well, here's a team that's definitely sticking together. We're going to throw it to Dash for a quick interview with the winners who are Coast. Moving on tomorrow. Thank you, gentlemen. As you are very right, I am standing with Team Coast, the winners of that 3-1 series. They're very convincing in those last three games. Uh, Mash, straight to you. I spoke to you earlier this year. You have been this close to the LCS before, basically a series out after winning that Summer, summer Challenger series. So... Being back in this position, how does it feel, and are you confident this time it's yours for the taking? I actually hate it, because, you know, if you lose this time, it's, like, probably the worst feeling, but if you win, it's the greatest feeling, so I think we're actually ready, and I hope we bring good, some, good uh, some good game tomorrow. 
Fantastic. And now, Impaler, you've made this giant transition with Jezzes from EU to NA. So I want to have a little insight there, just to move one, you know, to, to a new region and, and what that's allowed you to do with, with Team Coast. Uh, well, me and Jezzes came together, so it's like mid and jungle. So there's already synergy there. I've played with him before in EU. And other than that, the transition to NA, like NA solo queue is really troll. Like half the people care and half the people just want to have fun. So it's kind of a hard change to do that. But the competitive scene seems really good. The NA teams are really strong and been scrimming. So other than that, there's just better food and everything's bigger. Fantastic. Some adjustments to be made, though, like you said, in terms of getting used to solo queue and things like that. Now, Mash, regarding this series that you just played, game one got off to a rocky start, but it, it appeared as though the only change you guys really needed to make was in the pick ban phase, and then you guys just kind of went on fire and steamrolled through the next three games. So was that it, or was there a mindset change as well and some discussions within the team? To be fairly honest, our first game of the day is always bad, whether it's scrims or an actual game. So, I don't know. I think it's like a warm-up game for us, and it gets us rolling, but uh, obviously we did make those pick and ban changes. Well then, actually, I'm going to throw this right to you now, because looking at tomorrow, right, you're playing against Team Fusion, who has had a, simil had a similar record as you guys did against Curse Academy. Jat and Riv mentioned that, so definitely some stiff competition there. Are you a little bit concerned that getting off to a rocky start against them might be your downfall? Yeah, kind of, but today we came off with a win, and they came with a loss, so the momentum's kind of different for uh, the both of us. All right, momentum is a huge, huge factor. And Impaler, you've got a lot of momentum coming out of the jungle, making some huge plays today on Lee Sin. And I want to discuss a little bit the fact that you seem to have been opened up to play a bit more of a carry role with this team. Uh, with the current jungle, you've got a lot more freedom in what you do as well. And I kind of only really picked Lee today to take away from Short Race. It's his best champion, and I really respect him on that. So I can play make more with like Lee and stuff, but other than that, I just play Jarvan. And yeah, this team, like... This team gives me a lot of freedom because Mash is like always pushing bot, Jez is always pushing in mid, and Chris is always wanting to fight top. So it's just like, I, I get to choose where I go. It's always nice as a jungler to have options for sure. And now finally, just again, looking at tomorrow Impaler, are you confident coming out of the jungle now, swapping it up against Nintendude and some, more, some other pro, uh, former pro players, veterans, that you guys can kind of pull out the same victory? Uh, I'm pretty confident going in. I like all the fusion guys, and I think it'll be a really close series either way. All right, fantastic. Again, Team Coast will be taking on Team Fusion tomorrow for that final spot in the LCS for 2015. That takes place at 11 a.m. PST right here. So you do not want to miss that, as I'm sure it will be a very exciting match. Anyway, guys, I want to congratulate you on your victory today as it was hard fought. Wish you the best of luck tomorrow as well. Now, on behalf of myself, Riv, Jat, Pyra, and Zyrene, as well as the entire broadcast crew, I want to thank you guys for watching and wish you a good night.